Hello my soccer universe. Well, I'm not wearing a last jersey, you already know. They didn't do well. No, they didn't do well. They lost the first game of the season. Did a little bit of a short video as well on that, but you know, we'll talk about it uh, too. I personally, while I was a little bit gutted that this loss happened, I saw it coming. That I, They had that coming because the last two weeks of performances uh, uh, prior to, to that were not all that great. And so um, I think they needed a little bit of a ass whipping in a way to uh, go straight again. So, um, yeah, got it. Uh, the way it happened, we'll talk about it. Um, the one thing is, again, they cannot get a full 90 minute performance, but we'll talk about that. Um, also, the speaking of whipping, uh, the Austrian teams that got so badly beaten in the Europa uh, League and the Conference both bounced back with wins. Um, uh, among those, Sturm against Lustenau, which was kind of the top duel. Um, and also sending Reed in a little bit more trouble. But uh, the one team that really did well, 1-1 one, one at Chelsea, they only one more at home to repeat who are in crisis and maybe this is the first sign of life mm -hmm. you know <laughs> it is very hard to tell at this moment how much this was down to repeat being back to normal and how much it was down to uh salzburg just uh, letting it slide a little bit However, the title are already said full-on crisis mode in Munich. It is so ridiculous in, in a way because Bayern have been doing well in the Champions League and they actually said Chad, the Champions League have been saving them for now. But they had now three draws in a row, the first two of which honestly uh, were kind of unfair to Bayern. The Stuttgart draw was already kind, kind of deserved and now they had the first loss. And they got the first loss because they were outworked. Absolutely outworked and outpushed by Augsburg, lowly Augsburg. And it adds insult to injury that this is a local daughter because Augsburg is not too far away from Bayern. And given the um, big over regional power of Bayern by Munich, I always feel that Augsburg is a team uh, that very much has to exist in their own little bubble. I mean, this is in Augsburg and just, and just around. I don't think they have a lot of that because everything else gets sucked up by Bayern, Bayern Munich. Uh, it's actually remarkable that they can stay in there, uh, led, of course, by Stefan Reuter, who, of course, is famously a not only a World Cup winner from 1990, but a Bayern legend in his own right. So, you know, there's a whole lot of, lot, lot of stuff, stuff in there. We had also the um, uh, review derby back between Dortmund and Schalke, uh, which Dortmund in the end did win, but suffered the loss of Marco Reus. And we also had, uh, uh, actually, the top game was between Hoffenheim and Freiburg, but um, was a nil-nil draw of the highest degree. And Union Berlin are now very much clear top of the table and continue their good run and is almost a little bit of a, a downside, you know, uh, and also ran in a way. So the Bundesliga is really, really, really exciting. There are many more uh, things in there. However, before we go to the German Bundesliga, and actually, I'm wearing Gladbach. Uh, we have to mention them. I think they have made the turnaround. They look really good at, at this moment. I would say Gladbach will play in Europe next year. They really look good at this very moment. Okay, let's start in the Austrian Bundesliga where Miros has closes. Uh, Worries don't get less. I mean, Aldach tries to play nice, but the problem is they play against relegations. You, you cannot really play nice. They take the lead, a little bit against the runner run of play, but just before they have to get an equalizer, 4-1. Klangfurt it was a goal-filled Saturday. And five goals were also scored in Pushing, close to Linz, uh, and Lusk losing the first game at home. Not only that, conceding for the first time in the first half this season, conceding more than one goal for the first time, and then it's four. The game started so well. Uh, within three minutes, Nakamura had Lusk ahead, and it was a nicely played ball, and it was really, really all super played. Look all well, okay, we're going to take apart Tirol this time around, again, like they did uh, at the beginning of the um, relegation play of last uh, year. But, you know, Tirol is one of those opponents that always, uh, it, it, it's not a very nice opponent for last to play against. They, they always give you a fight and they always have seen, seen them trouble that. And within seconds of the kickoff, they equalize. And it was a nicely played uh, um attack where you could you 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 see the strike guys actually he makes the run and then he cuts in it was almost an american football uh go route in a way uh no uh, post route going in and then making that uh the the, the, the the turn 
getting three of the defendant pulled, putting it in. And uh, they really have done their homework because whenever they made a counterattack, the Tyrol that is, they really made the runs in such a way that they completely took apart the last defense. They've made the homework, they saw what are the frailties. Uh, and every time they managed uh, that the last defenders lose their men and they're free in, 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 in the box. Now it also has to be said, well, it took about 10 minutes for last to get going. They created many chances and should have probably take, taken it. There were a few in, in there where you really thought, okay, it's only a matter of time until last take the lead, until they didn't. That with the next attack, the Tyrol launched uh, Schulz, plays it into Prelitz, and it's 2-1. And then again, two open on the back, Rinaldi, just before the half, makes it 3-1. And at that moment, I still thought at this point that they might come back, although I thought this will be a hard one. Um, but the second half, then the, the the punch going forward never came. Now, uh, to be fair, also, I mean, they had three major players out there. I mean, a whole Serbian midfield uh, that uh, provides a lot of grit was uh, suspended uh, already. And then up front, um, you didn't have our main striker, but still. Um, you had a good squad out there that should have uh, punched it. And especially the second half is one that has me uh, honestly worried. The first half, I think, looked good. But the second half, it has been going for on for quite, quite a while. Uh, so that was the second comeback victory. Wolfsburg uh, completes the triple. Also, the third comeback victory. All the teams that had a one lead on Saturday lost. Wolfsburg getting a win over Hartberg, which also was needed. Then on Sunday, Austria Vienna, who had been badly beaten in Poland, 3-0 uh, over Ried, and Sturm Graz even worse beaten by Feyenoord. I mean, that was an absolute beatdown, and I made a video on that. 2-0 over Austria Lustenau. So, so that was at that point third against fourth. Um, Lustenau slowly going back to normal in a way. Um, but the big one was, of course, uh, the, this is almost the duel in Austria at the moment, although uh, it's not a competitive one. But you know, you have the most successful team against the most supportive team with Salzburg Rapid. And uh, everyone expect, expected that Salzburg is just going to roll over Rapid and, uh, give, and give them a proper um, thrashing. No. They took the lead within a minute, uh, in the first minute. Uh, nicely play, uh, played. Uh, yeah, Querfeld was caught out of position. However, Rapid came back and got an equal through Querfeld. Yes, there was a disallowed uh, goal for Salzburg, but Rapid really dug in and fought and got themselves a draw at Salzburg, which is a rather remarkable result considering how bad they have been over the past few weeks. So uh, credit to Rapid to really getting... Uh, this point, um, I also think, you know, always the dates before and just after the international break are always tough spots because uh, you never you never know whether you get the best out of your team. Uh, there is kind of uh, the end in sight. So, currently in the standings, we have now Lask and Sturm uh, level. Uh, Lask still ahead of Sturm because of head-to-head, -head because they won in Graz. Uh, but well, but see, there, there was a little bit of turn there. Uh, Lucena still hang, hang on to fourth, but now it's Rapid. Uh, despite the loss, I mean, losing more points. Uh, I'm really curious uh, how, how it's going. I didn't expect Austria Vienna to make such a comeback, but it is still very much Salzburg, then Sturm and Lask, and then the rest. I have, though, a slight fear that Lask will go a little... I mean, I think they will make top six, but I think they will. they are coming down a little bit. Teams in trouble, definitely Ried und Alltag. Uh, there's real, real unrest there. With Altach, maybe the goodwill because of Miro Klose there in Ried, I hear uh, there's a lot of fire there uh, that needs to be pulled pull, pull, pull out and Hartberg uh, kind of hanging in also there. Um, expected final regular season standings, you see Sturm now ahead of Lusk. Um, Almost to be expected, but last still on a safe third spot. Then, the, then it's the Vienna teams, but now Lucerne are falling out. And a similar um, story is also in the expected final standings. Uh, still, Alta have very much favored to go down, but Reed don't get better. Don't get better. Uh, I will do the next video on the Austrian Bundesliga. Um, 
after the international break. That's coming for sure. And Lask have a really, really tough opponent with Salzburg away from home. But I already said it. After the international break and the Salzburg players, there are many of them are going on international duty, whereas Lask is only missing the goal goalkeeper. So that might actually play in their favor. I still expect them to lose there. However, on the flip side, I think Sturm Graz against Austria Vienna, the big one, that's actually pretty uh, a tough game where I think a draw is kind of looming in a way. And then we have Ried Altach. That is already a big one. I know points are being halved, but uh, that could already decide the fate of one coach or another. Going over to Germany, uh, <laughs> we had Mainz getting a super late equalizer uh, against uh, Hertha, who really thought that they had already got the win and done everything. Uh, they just didn't score the second goal. However, we need to talk Bayern Augsburg or Augsburg Bayern. But on the day that not only I did my unpacking video with two new Bayern jerseys, but also that the Oktoberfest in Munich started and the Bayern players were, of course, on Sunday at the Oktoberfest. Uh, not the best moment, I think, to be out in the public, to be honest. What can I say? Bayern did their, uh, try to play their normal game, but it's too nice to, uh, you know, uh, we are better and uh, playing nice. Whereas Augsburg, they had a very um, risky game plan. We press them up high and we make life hell for them. And the coach even said, I think there are only two ways that can happen. To them. Either we lose 5-0 or we win 1-0. Well, he got the latter part because Augsburg, out muscled Bayern. They really got on their nerves and uh, once Bayern realized that they have to work hard, I think this scared them off. And, they, and especially going up front, they did not go to the places where it really hurts. I mean, they always want to be cute about it, but they never went to the places where, where it hurts. And Augsburg were really, really, really working hard from beginning to end. They had an extra chip on the shoulder. And that's the problem with Bayern is that almost everyone has a chip on the shoulder against them. And in a local derby, even more. And then the um, goal came in the 59th through Mergen Berisha, former Salzburg player. Uh, and now it is a uh, huge trouble for Bayern already. And they cannot really get a good equalizing chance. And at this moment, uh, what's even more is that uh, Mane was this great signing and he was this uh, great figure. At the moment, he seems like he's a foreign body in this uh, team. And that doesn't sound uh, very nice. Uh, uh, and it's probably not, no, not only fair to him. Uh, the biggest chance to equalize came by a brilliant header by Maa Mananoi, the Gikiewicz saved, and Gikiewicz actually was another one. Uh, goalkeepers against Bayern, as, as of late, have the games of their lives. But um, typically Bayern, I mean, they actually try to keep it calm. Uh, and I think a lot will hinge now on the Champions League and how they move forward. But it's not the... Um, how to, how, to, how to say, it's not the intent of Bayern to let the Bundesliga slide. Having said that, I think everyone still, like, is, 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 is still agrees we don't see anyone challenging. Because one team that would have the talent in Leverkusen, again, cannot manage a win at home. Uh, Werder, Werder Bremen is doubling in an equalizer very late on, almost even get, getting a winner, despite them by having a brilliant goal to give them a 1-0 lead and largely controlling the game. Dortmund for once actually take uh, use, uh, take on the opportunity and get a win when Bayern is, is, is losing to kind of uh, make a little bit of a distance between themselves and Bayern. The distance should actually be bigger. I mean, just look at the Werder Bremen game that they had in the back. They could have had already a big distance now between themselves and Bayern, but they don't. And that's the reason why Bayern still stays as in. And this derby actually showed all of Dortmund's promise. Schalke defended for their lives and uh, Dortmund just created chances but never could get anything really done and it seemed like uh, Schalke is gonna grind out a draw here on top of that uh, Marco Reus had to come off I mean now we hear it's not as bad of an injury but when he went out everyone was kind of fearing oh he might miss another big tournament maybe not the goal then comes from Mukoku, who comes on. I think he's he's not a younger scorer in the Revere Derby. Uh, and Dortmund and probably they did deserve their win. I, it was way harder work than it should be because the difference between Dortmund and Schalke at this point is unfortunately really, really, really big. 
that derby is much better when Schalke is also up there. But you know, they get the win. Job done. Uh, job done also for Frankfurt, who after a bad showing last week um, had the win at Marseille and now show up in Frankfurt. Ah, show up in Frankfurt. Show up in Stuttgart and get a relatively easy win with Kamada stealing the show. Uh, the first goal came through Rode and Kamada. I think it was a free kick. He assists the third, third one. That was only when Tomas uh, pulls for back that Stuttgart maybe thought that they have a prayer, but they didn't really have. Uh, another big one, Leipzig, is another team that should actually play, be playing up there, but is not. And the way you think the squad is there, they were completely outplayed by Gladbach. And this is a Gladbach team um, that with coach Farke, coming, which we know from Norwich, uh, Norwich, uh, should... We, he is now a real threat and Jonas Hoffmann scoring the first two uh, Ben Bands when adding a third to 353rd they really outplayed and uh, also outmuscled Leip Leipzig and I think Marco Rosa has a lot of work to uh, the added spice to that game so of course Marco Rosa left uh, Gladbach for Dor Dortmund he was actually really liked in Gladbach but now also um, their uh, former manager uh, now his name does come is also in negotiation with Leipzig already, although he stepped down uh, last year because he said it's just too much. I cannot uh, really do it. Uh, Max Abel was his name, so uh, he's probably now the new sporting director at Leipzig because he works well with Rose. So yeah, there is a quite some spice there, and Gladbach fans are not happy. On Sunday, only on Berlin didn't see much. Get a two 0 win over Wolfsburg. Now uh, the first goal was called uh, scored by Sibajeo. Officially, it's shortened. It's actually Pifog, a US striker. So I uh, didn't know that. Didn't make me take on Geraldo Becker, who has been uh, rather consistent scoring. Gets uh, the second goal. So only on Berlin. Up on top of the table still, and I think every Union fan cannot believe this. Uh, I have been telling the story so far, but Union Berlin is not a classic Bundesliga club. They're a classic, uh, a third-tier club, I would even say. You know, very much rooted in the com community, and to see this rise, that this is a well-run and fan-run club for most of all the time, is just one of the best stories out there in Europe at this very moment. Um, Bochum fired their coach uh, and get the first point uh, but both goals were scored by, uh, by Kern one very early on an own goal and then uh, Mina gets a very late equalizer and Kern having also now a bad string of results at least the Europa League keeps them in but you know I think Kern is overall rather safe uh, but it might only be a mid-table finish and then the big clash between Hoffman and Freiburg I cannot tell you much it was a nil-nil uh, it was kind of I think Freiburg had a little bit more of the initiative but uh, Hoffman can always threaten so it was kind of a, a game that fizzled out towards the end a little bit. And I had anyway, my uh, focus was then on more important games in Italy, uh, Spain and France. Table. Dortmund makes a run to second spot uh, right behind Union Berlin, Freiburg and Bayern out of the Champions League spots. But the big one is, of course, the big green 88%. Still a huge percentage would go to Bayern winning the Bundesliga. It is not that big of a difference. I mean, it's only five points to, to the top. It's only three points uh, behind Dor Dor Dortmund. I don't think we need to worry about Bayern overall too much, despite all the crisis talk, but this is typically Bayern in many ways. Uh, Gladbach and Frankfurt moving up. Uh, Mainz, Köln, Bremen uh, down. Augsburg making a huge jump up. Leipzig still in the doldrums, Leverkusen still in the, in, in the doldrums and I think Wolfsburg is already a team where uh, we have to talk, there is where we have to really talk about crisis because the semi cannot string anything together. Uh, we see of course in, in, in the bars the Bayern has now won a very prominent red bar but it's Leverkusen that's the biggest dis disappointment with Union Berlin. Of course, the positive surprise of the season so far. However, I think it's always best to look at the expected standings. And there is Bayern ahead of Dortmund and then Leipzig. Uh, Bayern still very clear on top. And then Union Berlin is still in the Champions League spot, which we already had last season, uh, last week as well. Uh, with Gladbach and Freiburg for now rounding out the top six, there might be a seventh team, you know, the cup winner may make it. So uh, seventh spot also makes it into Europe. At the moment, this would be Frankfurt. I honestly think that this sounds about right. I think Le Le Leverkusen, although with a run, Leverkusen could go in there. But I think those are other teams. I don't think that Hoffenheim, Köln, uh, Mainz, all these, these teams. Köln overstretched themselves last, last season. I think that they will come uh, down a little bit, but not into relegation trouble, I would say. Uh, I give it the next two rounds, and Bayern have really tough games. 
Bayern against Leverkusen. That's the comeback game. And honestly, Bayern will do their best to really make up for all, uh, you know, to totally silence all the crickets. I wouldn't want to be Leverkusen in that one. Um, Frankfurt against Union Berlin is also a pretty good game, uh, as is current Dortmund. There's quite some spice in there as well already. Uh, the other games, I think, you know, at the moment it does look good. Does, 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 does look so tasty, but who knows? But the big one, of course, is coming a Saturday on the 8th of October, Dortmund against Bayern. That's, uh, that's, that will tell us a lot. And then we have the derby between Gladbach, the Rhein derby between Gladbach and Köln. That's also a pretty big game uh, in the, on, the cal on the calendar to look forward to. In any case, that's it from me from the two Bundesligas. As I love, love to say, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Add a comment below if you want to add anything more. Uh, subscribe to my channel and I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the little bell icon so that you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye.